Here's a case of a full thickness excision for a nasty plantar lesion, sub fourth metatarsal phalangeal joint. Been there for about a year, very sore, resistant to topical treatment. So therefore, we've gone for our minor surgery skin set. Knife, fork and spoon really in terms of some forceps, a 15 blade. Um, curatage is an option, but I'll talk again in some other videos about why I prefer a full thickness excision to a typical curatage. So I'm going to talk to myself, okay, but I'm really talking to the camera, okay? And I won't mention your name so nobody recognises who you are. But this young lady has got a really rather nasty Veruca cum corn here. And I think it's really more Veruca that's turned into a corn. Good tune! Excuse me. Sneeze. So, a little sneeze this morning. So there's our lesion. So we're going to take this out. Um, at about this size. It's been been here for about a year, really quite sore. This young lady's tried various topical remedies for it, so we're going to cut it out and let it heal in by secondary intention. Now I've talked on other videos about full, thick, full thickness excision excuse me, versus curatage, but I, I just think full thickness makes more sense for these. Actually, let's do it now. So patient presents to your clinic, your office, your surgery, with a foot pathology and they've got a skin lesion. Some poetic license here because clearly this is a, um, a, a graphic of a skin with hair follicles on. We're thinking really about plant surface of the skin which isn't going to be hairy of course. We decide we're going to do something surgically, curatage which typically would use a spoon, a Voltman curette, um, a picture coming up nearest I could really find to a spoon. So they're relatively sharp they go down to okay let's blow up the picture of the skin so they go down to the derm dermo epidermal junction not all the way through because in theory that's where you get the bad scarring but what you will leave at the bottom of the the reet peg is that the the acanthosis of the dermo epidermal junction is you'll left you you'll be left with some some deeper elements where the, the skin will still potentially be viral and I think regeneration from this point is really quite a potential. So at that point, you're not going to get all the viral elements out. And squiggling red coming up, there you go, there's a red squiggle. So at these points, you could regenerate virus. Some people will phenolize the bed, but that's not something I ever found really works for me. So ra rather than curatage, my thoughts are to do a full thickness excision, go all the way through, take out all the dermal epidermal junction. Downside of that is there's potential for scarring because you're into the dermis so yellow squiggle coming up there it is so there's a potential for scarring because you're going all the way through but my experience has been that it's a, a more effective technique overall for the risk of a plain flat scar we'll start off with a bit of skin prep so we'll have our little chlorophyll what we like so we're just going to clean the skin and we'll send this off to histo as we like to do and i'll add the results in, in a bit but this is pretty sure we're going to come back as veruca but you look at this little fella now and you just think well it's really a veruca masquerading as a corn okay so there's our skin prep right what kind of setup you saw the picture before Kara came is my particular favourite for these. So my lady just asked me just before I started, she said, here's the local anaesthetic on hers. And there'll be a little sting and a scratch, Chuck, all right? Don't pull a face. That's what happened to me. I used to be really good looking, you know. And then I had an injection and now I look like this. Mm -hmm. oh, I, used to, I used to look like Brad Pitt. Not really. Still in shot, awesome, awesome. Yeah. Cool. All right. Don't put okay. So little scratch. All right, are you ready? Three, two, one, scratch. So I'm coming all the way through the foot now. Gonna be a little sting as it goes in just now. You're just feeling that little sting. Uh-huh. 
How's that? You okay? So I'm just working that deeper. I'm not all the way down yet, guys. I'm just going a little bit deeper just as we get closer to that planter's skin. and just give a little bit of normal tissue so almost like a little soaring action so my lady didn't absolutely enjoy the local anaesthetic procedure um, it's an option doing those cheap blocks I really like to do them because they're really handy in clinic Obviously, a tibial block is an option as well. So, so the amount of bleeding you get is really rather modest. And that's because of, you get it raised up on a wall of anaesthesia, which is one of the reasons I like these blocks. So all the way through, you can see it's quite a deep lesion. Not always much deeper than you think. And this goes off to histo, and this will come back as a verger, I'm sure. So, that's it all out. And you can see quite a hole. It was good. Oh, look, all out. Okay. Oh, all out. So. So, we'll put a big old bandage on. Here's one I prepared earlier. So they can bleed a little bit really, so I do like a, a nice chunky dressing. No prizes lost for subtlety there. All done. So the actual getting you numb is always the most fun bit for you. And then once it out, takes two minutes. Mm -hmm. Well done. Would you like an I've Been Brave badge? Do they have those in your home countries? You get a little badge if you've been really brave. <laughs> so, bit of a compression bandage. Oh, just lift it for me, smile if you can. So I'm just going to go around the back. Try not to have too many creases in. My old shooter would be telling me off for any creases. So, we're going to leave this lady here for about two minutes just to check that we don't get any clouds coming through. Put that back into shot. Sorry about the camera wobble there, guys. All done. So, that's going to be numb for about the next five or ten hours. So, we need to kind of rest today. Okay, we'll see you back next week to change that dressing. I'm going to put a big post op shoe on so you can, you can fit that. Be a little bit sore when it wears off, but not too bad. Mm. Questions? Anything I've not been through? Any questions, my dear? So when I saw what, what should I, I should take like five tomorrow, I would not know. Yeah, paracetamol will be good, maybe a little bit of codeine, whatever works for you. The main thing is just to kind of rest and... Uh, yeah, scissors, scissors. Say it again. Yes, indeed. Look how big this is. Jeez. Uh-huh. Deep one. Uh-huh. They're deep, aren't they, huh? Yeah. It's good. All right. All done. You are fabulous. Sorry about the shots. You can get some bleeding with these. Obviously, you've got an open secondary intention wound. So, big dressing, and I often use a post-op shoe for these as well to let the patient ambulate. Here's a close-up of the lesion. If you look at the left of it, you can see the epidermis, but it's really like an iceberg. All the white, fibrous, thickened tissue that you don't see below. And that's, I think, really one of the reasons that the topical treatments often fail. So, that went off to histo. Guess what? Came back as a Veruca. No surprise there. Um, I will do a follow-up video in a few months when you can see what the overall scar looks like.